good morning. Let's connect with Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of another day. We pray that, Father, you would forgive us for any ways, Father God, we have offended you or one another, where we have turned our back on you or upon others, Lord. I pray that you'd forgive us. And through the blood of your son, Jesus, you would cleanse us, you would forgive us. And help us, Father, to be covered by your righteousness. We pray that you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit to give us your perspective. Help us to humble ourselves before you, to take your way, to see, Lord God, your truth, and to be able to understand it, to take it to heart, to really engage with you, and to walk, Lord God, in your way. Help us today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, so we are in John chapter 16, verses 25 through 33. So John chapter 16, starting from verse 25, we'll end at verse 33, which ends that chapter. Uh, I'll be reading from the NIV, but of course, you could read from any other version. And the first question we want to ask ourselves is, what does this passage tell us about God? And we'll have some time to just meditate on that. This is Jesus speaking. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now we are, you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you believe now? Jesus replied. A time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Take a minute to reflect on that. What does this passage tell us about people? And of course, if anything that comes to mind, yeah, please feel free to write it in the comments. Bless us. Help us engage with this word. Now, what does this passage tell us about people? I mean, tell us about God. I see here, and I'm reminded in verse 25, how he speaks figuratively uh, to his disciples often. It reminds me about how he uses parables. 
And why does he do that? Why does God do that? I think if we look at least at his explanation for the parables, uh, he, he lived in very dangerous times. And for him to speak certain things plainly um, would have, people would have misunderstood and would have gotten him killed sooner. So we know that, at least publicly, when he was speaking in parables, it was really kind of a test to see who's really serious and who wants to know more and will press in to find out more. And uh, and to separate out those who only are satisfied with a shallow understanding and won't press in further. So, yeah, sometimes God speaks to us uh, figuratively to really see if we're going to press in to know him. Uh, and there is, uh, yeah, this side of heaven, even even uh, as he speaks to us, this side of heaven, there's certain things that we won't fully understand. Um, but we should press in to understand. But as he says, in that day, at least right before this, when we see him face to face, those questions will be answered. What else does this passage tell us about uh, about God? Uh, this is encouraging. In verse 27. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. So uh, we ask in Jesus' name, but he's saying, look, it's not just that I'm going to ask on on your behalf to the Father, but I'm that connection where you can actually have a relationship with the Father, and the Father is not like, I only listen to the Son, but if you love my Son, I love you, right? And isn't that true about us, especially for us who are parents? When someone loves our children, uh, they're really loving us. They, they understand our heart. So to know that the Father, as we love Jesus, the Father loves us intimately and we have that access to the Father. He adopts us as son and daughters. So we have that kind of access. It's good to know. You know, how do we view our, our Heavenly Father? Is he his arms crossed and distant? Or is he inviting us with love and it's the latter. Jesus is saying, hey, the Father loves you because you love me. That means you understand his heart. You understand what he's about. So that the Heavenly Father loves us. What else do I see about God in this passage? We have in the last verse of this chapter, this a beautiful and encouraging word in this time. Jesus is saying, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Um, ah, it's such a good word. What does this tell us about God? It tells us that in Him, and only in Him, can we have peace. Even in the midst of all that is happening, where else can we find peace? And the human peace is, is false, is artificial, is temporary. But God's peace we can have in us. That's eternal and it doesn't depend upon circumstances. Yeah. And for us to know that he communicates with us, that he loves us. That we could trust that he comes from God. Um, that he won't leave us alone. 
And that gives us peace. So what does this tell us about God? He is the source of all peace, and he gives peace. Uh, and he wants his peace to be within us. And this word, I just need to say it a couple times. just need to speak that to myself. In this world, you will have trouble. So Jesus knows we will have trouble in this world. Things will not be right in this world. But it says, but take heart. But take heart. I have overcome the world. That the world is not bigger than God. And God is not overwhelmed by the world. He has victory over the world. And in that we can have peace. That he has won. The victory is already his. We're just in the midst of it. So, now what does this tell me about God? I could take heart in Him. I could have peace in Him, no matter what. Knowing that He's going to work this out. And He already has a victory. It doesn't mean that we're passive in this. But we know who's really... Uh, in control and of course he's still calling his disciples to follow in his path to be his peacemakers to be his instruments of, of that peace but it starts with knowing that God is in control and has that offers that peace that we could have that in him to enable us to endure to walk through uh, whatever he's calling us to so what does this passage tell us about people give us a minute to reflect on that this is john 16 uh, verses 25 to 33 what does this passage tell us about people What does this passage tell us about people? See, as, as Jesus is speaking more plainly about where he's going, he's going, you know, back to the Father, he's going uh, back to heaven. Then the disciples are like, okay, now you're speaking clearly. Thank you. You know, now we believe you, right? That you, you're, uh, you really came from God. And, oh man, right here in verse 31 and 32, it says, do you now believe? Jesus replied. And then, oh man, he calls us out. A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home, and you will leave me all alone. Ugh. And he says, yet yeah, I am not alone, for my Father is with me. What does this tell us about people? How about us? Man, again, we talk a big game. Even when Jesus speaks so plainly and clearly to us, that doesn't mean that's going to solve all the problems. It doesn't mean that our faith will be like, oh, yes. Because even when he speaks so clearly and so plainly, do we obey him? Do we continue to trust him? How many times has he 
communicated to us and given us understanding, even if it was figuratively, he's given us understanding of his heart and what he's really about. And time and again, he's shown that he's worthy to be trusted. And then when stuff gets hard, as, as it will and it does for the disciples in less than 12 hours, they do all leave him, Jesus, in his time of need. So what does this tell me about people? Even when we're shown just all the evidence, even if God is revealing himself to us so clearly, it does not mean that we always trust him, especially when things get hard. Our, our fair weatherness, you know, depending on the weather, we will change. That um, figuratively, not just on the weather, but in terms of socially, in terms of emotionally. It makes me wonder, you know, um, I was just talking with a friend, it, it, in terms of our times right now, um, even, even five years ago, I, I, rem I was just remembering, I had friends who really kind of questioned Black Lives Matter, um, but now you see cities across the nation, you see the world, uh, different cities across the world coming out, not just black folk, uh, but folks of all colors saying, yeah, black lives do matter. Not that, um, you know, other lives don't matter. That's the whole uh, thing. <laughs> the whole all lives matter. Uh, yes, we know that all lives matter. We're saying black lives matter too. Uh, you know, in the clearest way, you know, there's a lot of different ways to explain it, but if multiple, right, you have multiple houses on a block and one house is on fire, you're, you're not saying that these other houses don't matter, but you got to put out this fire. That house is burning. It needs to be affirmed that hey, this house matters. That that's what it means. But anyways, um, all that to say, at least black folk have been carrying this burden for so so long. But I'm I'm finally seeing more folks. Uh, non-black folk beginning to see, beginning to wake up, uh, you know, me included. Um, and I've seen more folks uh, on my on my timelines, uh, my Asian American brothers and sisters speaking than I've ever heard them speak up before. Uh, it's unfortunate it's taken us this long to speak up, uh, but it's happening. But I share this to say, when the mood, when the weather uh, amongst our circles, more folks are, you know, affirming uh, this uh, cry for justice, then it's a more popular thing to do, to do that. Right, but where were we five years ago? And if public opinion changes again, it can. Will we still take the same stance when it is dangerous to do so? What if the government cracks down hard uh, on Black Lives Matter? Will we still stay in? I don't know. So God knows, God knows our fair weatherness. But what else does this passage tell me about people? There is another way. There is another way. Because we know his disciples, yeah, they do fail him big time. But God is so faithful, so faithful, he gives them another chance. 
And right, it says, knowing this, he knows, wait, but the Father's with me. I'm not alone. Even if you leave me alone, I'm going to persevere. And then he says, graciously, even though he calls us out, says, look, I've told you these things so that you could have peace in my heart. Peace in your heart. So when the testing comes, like, you're not going to be shaken. You're going to have that peace in your heart. And there's going to be trouble in this world. You might fail at this time, but you could take heart. I've overcome the world. This is even the words he says to Peter, right? Like, I know you're going to mess up, but I'm praying for you that your faith won't fail. And you're going to go around and go back and encourage your brothers, even after this failure. There's going to be redemption. And uh, what does this tell me about people? It tells me it is possible with God in us to overcome even uh, the darkest of times, even uh, the most intense uh, persecution and pressure. Because to the extent that we have that relationship with him, we're trusting in him. We're having his peace in our heart trusting that he has overcome and when they see Jesus's resurrection man that gives them such courage and affirmation that he has overcome and as history plays out these 11 10 out of the 11 all lay down their lives and are martyred uh, for their faith so they come through they come through they learn. They learn to have his peace in their heart and to know that Jesus has overcome and is overcoming. So um, there's hope for us yet. Right? But we gotta we gotta stay in it. We gotta stay in it. And we can only stay in it with, with Jesus. Even if everyone else leaves us alone, Jesus would not. That's what's gonna get us through. And the the eleventh one who uh, who didn't get martyred, they tried. And guess who that eleventh one was? It's John who wrote this book. Right? They tried to burn him in hot oil. <laughs> he he wouldn't die. Uh, so God had purpose for him. Maybe to write this book. Uh, maybe to write Revelation. Uh, God had a purpose for him to not die a martyr's death uh, but he understood and he saw his brothers die and uh, he did it back down even as an old man right he was exiled and punished but they couldn't keep him down yeah well third question is uh, how do we obey this word today Jesus, what are you speaking to us? How do you want us to obey this word today? Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Yeah, I'm challenged to uh, remain in Him even when things get hard. Knowing that if I remain in Him, I'm going to have His peace. And trusting that He has overcome the world. That will help me to overcome whatever is going, going on because He's in me and I'm in Him. Yeah. Fourth question is, who can we share this with? Who needs this word? Even through failure, but God will overcome 
If we're with him, we can overcome. We can have peace in the midst of of violence in the midst of unrest and uncertainty. We can hold on to him. Yeah. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you for showing us what it means to live justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. Help us to remain in you and trusting and knowing that you will remain with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. With that in mind, Father, and in our hearts, help us to overcome. Help us to not shy back from the good that you would have us do, from the justice that you would have us bring forth. Help us to trust that you have overcome. And in you, Father God, we could have peace that surpasses understanding. Even in the midst of different weather, even in the midst of darkness and troubling times, we can take heart because you've overcome the world. And your peace, Lord God, will enable us to be peacemakers. Let it be so. Lord Jesus, let us not live with public opinion, which sways. But Father God, help us to live and dwell in you and follow you into life, true life. Thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.